Hi all. The previous video covered phases, phase equilibrium, Gibbs phase rule, Rochetalia principle, unary phase diagrams, and cooling curves. Now we are equipped with the tools needed for the binary phase diagrams and the lever rule, thus ready to start the second leg of this journey. Unlike unary phase diagrams, we deal with two substances in binary phase diagrams. This substance couple can be two elements, two compounds, or one element and one compound. Binary phase diagrams can be divided into three main classes. Binary isomorphous systems, binary eutectic or eutectic-like systems, and binary peritectic or peritectic-like systems. But first, let's get familiar with the binary phase diagrams. The pure components are placed at the far ends of the composition axis of binary phase diagrams. Conventionally, the composition axis represents the composition of the substance at the right end of the axis to have 0% on the left end and 100% on the right end of the composition axis. The points cutting the temperature axis at the left and right sides of the phase diagram shows the melting points of components A and B respectively. The curve separating the liquid phase and the liquid solid phase mixture is called the liquidus line. The curve separating the liquid solid phase mixture and the solid phase is called the solidus line. Below the solidus line, we obtain a solid solution of A and B components, which are phases usually labeled with Greek letters. There is a mixture of alpha and liquid phases between the solidus and liquidus line. Lastly, in some binary phase diagrams, a line separating a solid phase from a solid-solid phase mixture called the solvus line may exist. After getting familiar with the binary phase diagrams, now we can focus on the lever rule, which enables the precise calculation of the ratios of the present phases in the two-phase region of the phase diagrams. For a given alloy with composition X at temperature T, a horizontal line over the temperature T is drawn until it intersects the two lines at the left and right sides. This line is called the tie or conjugation line. The point where the tie line intersects these two lines shows the compositions of each phase for the selected temperature and phase mixture composition. Then, the lever rule is applied to obtain fractions of each phase at the given conditions. When applying the lever rule, the given composition X is considered the reference point on the tie line, and two points of interaction of the tie line with these lines represents its limits. Let's call the lengths of the lines between the intersection on the right side and the X point, and between X point and the intersection on the left side as A and B, respectively. The percentage of the phase alpha in the phase mixture under these conditions is equal to B over A plus B times 100. And the percentage of liquid phase in the phase mixture for the given conditions is equal to A over A plus B times 100. Now let's investigate the cooling of an alloy having a composition of X in an isomorphous phase diagram. In these systems, we do not observe isothermal reactions. The cooling starts from T0 when there is only a liquid phase having composition X. After hitting the temperature Tl, precipitation of first crystals having composition alpha 1 starts. These precipitates are covered with a liquid phase having composition X. The temperature range between the liquidus and solidus curve is called the solidification range for cooling processes and the melting range for heating processes. As the temperature decreases in the solidification region, the compositions and relative amounts of liquid and solid phases change continuously and can be precisely determined. During this period, previously formed crystals grow and new crystals nucleate simultaneously. Solidification completes when the temperature hits Ts at the solus line, 
and there exists the alloy showing only solid alpha phase having composition X. Now, let's move on to the binary eutectic phase diagrams. In the eutectic systems, components of the system are miscible in the liquid phase, but have limited solubility in the solid phase, which is represented in these solus lines. Over the eutectic systems, the point denoted as E is the eutectic point, and is generally located closer to the component with lower melting point. In a eutectic reaction, a liquid phase transforms into two solid phases, having lamellar morphology. Let's take a look at the cooling process of a eutectic system. We only have molten alloy at temperatures above Te at eutectic composition Xe. As the alloy slowly cools down, it remains a homogeneous liquid until reaching the eutectic point. Upon reaching the eutectic point, the eutectic reaction isothermally occurs, and simultaneously, both solid phases crystallize, and form a sandwich-like lamella structure. The compositions and the ratios of the alpha and beta phases in the alloy for the eutectic temperature and the composition can be precisely determined using the tire line at the eutectic temperature and the lever rule. After the phase transformation finishes, the system's temperature starts to decrease again. Lastly, as the system is further cooled to a temperature T, the compositions and ratios of alpha and beta phases will change depending on the solvus line's composition at the system temperature. Alloys on the left side of the eutectic composition are called hypoeutectic and on the right side are called hypereutectic alloys. As the hypoeutectic alloys having composition Xe- starts cooling from T0, initially some liquid will transform into alpha and liquid phase mixture at the solidification range. Here, the alpha phase will precipitate in spherical shapes and be covered by the liquid phase. These initially formed alpha precipitates are called the primary alpha phase. As the temperature reaches the Te, the remaining liquid phase will isothermally transform into eutectic alpha and beta phase mixture, having a lamellar structure. These newly formed phases are called the secondary or eutectic phases. Similar phase transformations are seen for hypereutectic compositions. Initially, an alloy having composition Xe plus is cooled from temperature T0, where there exists only liquid phase. At the solidification range, the beta and liquid phase mixture will form, and it will have spherical primary beta precipitates covered by liquid phase. Then the liquid phase will isothermally transform into the eutectic alpha and beta phase mixture in lamellar structure. In some cases, alloy compositions may be outside the range of the eutectic line. When such alloys are cooled from liquid phase, initially, some of the liquid phase transforms into alpha and liquid phase mixture. After further cooling, we reach the solidus line between the alpha phase and alpha plus liquid phase mixture. As the temperature goes below the solidus line, we only see the alpha phase in the system. After further cooling, if the solvus line between the alpha phase and alpha plus beta phase mixture is cut, some of the alpha precipitates will transform into beta phase. The same applies to the compositions beyond the eutectic line for the beta phase region. Now we can take a brief look at some other eutectic-like systems, like monotectic, metatectic, and eutectoid systems. In monotectic systems, there exists two partially immiscible liquid phases called L1 and L2. Thus, solidification does not start from a homogeneous liquid system. During the monotectic reaction, 
L1 transforms into L2 and one of the solid phases. In metatectic reactions, a solid phase transforms into another solid phase and liquid phase. And lastly, in eutectoid reactions, solid phase transforms into two new solid phases. If there exists a significant difference between the melting points of the two components, paratectic reactions may be seen. Over the paratectic systems, the point denoted as P is the paratectic point. During the isothermal paratectic reactions, one liquid and one solid phase transforms into another solid phase. Now let's consider a paratectic alloy having composition XP at temperature T0. It will first intersect with the liquid slime as it is cooled from the liquid phase. Then, the alpha phase will precipitate, which predominantly consists of the high melting point component in the phase diagram. Upon reaching the paratectic point, all the alpha and liquid phases transform into beta phase. Like eutectic reactions, there exists hypo and hyperparatectic reactions in paratectic systems. For a hypoparatectic alloy having composition Xp- at T0, some liquid phase will initially transform to alpha and liquid phases at the solidification range. Here, alpha phase will precipitate in spherical shapes and be covered by the liquid phase. These initially formed alpha precipitates will be called the primary alpha. As the temperature reaches the Tp, the remaining liquid phase and some of the primary alpha precipitates will transform into beta phase, and the beta phase will envelop the remaining primary alpha precipitates after the paratectic reaction. Similar phase transformations are seen for hyperparatectic compositions. Take a hyperparatectic alloy having composition Xp plus at T0. At the solidification range, the alpha and liquid phase mixture will form from liquid phase, and it will have spherical primary alpha precipitates covered with the liquid phase. Then, during the paratectic reaction, liquid and alpha phase mixture will be transformed to beta precipitates, being called primary beta, and covered by the liquid phase. Further cooling of the alloy will lead to the transformation of the remaining liquid phase to beta phase. In the end, primary and secondary beta phases will coexist. Now let's take a look at some of the other paratectic-like reactions, such as syntactic, syntactoid, and paratectoid. In the reaction of a syntactic system, two immiscible liquids form a solid phase. During a paratectoid reaction, two solid phases turn into another solid phase. Similar to paratectoid systems, during the syntactoid reactions, two solid phases transform into another solid phase. But there's a nuance between the paratectoid and syntactoid reactions. That is, in a syntactoid reaction, the reactant solid phases can share the same lattice at sufficiently high temperatures. With this said, we reach the second checkpoint of the phase diagram subseries. In the following video, we will be using the knowledge gained in this video and applying it to the iron-carbon phase diagram, a well-known and often used phase diagram in the making of cast iron and steel. See you next time!